So, what was Hot Tub Time Machine, Kim? Well, Hot Tub Time Machine, uh, I think it is, it's kind of an 80s retro film. Um, I thought about this a little bit. Maybe the best way to describe it is it's a little bit um, city slickers, a little bit big, and a little bit dude, where's my car? Okay, and if it's a mixture of that, I would have expected it to be cheesy in a bad way. So yeah. what did you think? Did you like it? I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. I laughed a lot. And uh, it's, you know, it has some very smart elements to it, but it never tries to get too clever. Um, the stuff with Crispin Glover, uh, we don't want to give anything out, so anything away, is, is really fantastic. Um, well, that leads us a little bit into the soundtrack. How did, how, what, what kind of role do you think the music played in the On the music, I mean, I mean, A, the music would be expected also. I mean, you would expect yeah. sort of like good 80s music. Well, they did a fantastic job. I mean, I think the selection uh, was, was good, but not cheesy uh, to a certain degree. I would say that um, even if you think about cheesy, okay, so what I'm going to say next may sound cheesy, but somehow <laughs> Motley Crue worked beautifully in this film. Okay, like, and yeah. not even one of Motley Crue's heavier songs, one of their 80s hair metal ballads. But you're absolutely right. It, you would think it would be, I think our description of it is going to make it sound cheesy. And, uh, but when you see it and how it's used in the film, it actually doesn't come across as cheesy. No, and it's a little and, tongue in cheek, maybe. Oh, tell, well, the whole movie, in a certain way, is tongue in cheek, but it's uh, it's almost like a love letter to the 1980s, not making fun of it, but looking at it in a fond way of its idiosyncrasies, for example, from that perspective. Mm -hmm. This may be a movie for people who have grown up in the 80s. I'm not 100% sure people who don't know what the 80s was, whether they can connect to it, whether through jokes or through references. I mean, sometimes, I mean, this is a cliched thing. Oh, they don't get it. But I think this may be a movie where there is a little bit going on more in terms of the references or the, f the atmosphere, let's put it this way. Okay, so is the film, do you think the film is anything more than just a love letter to the 80s? Some people of the contemporary generation might get into that or might not. And I agree with you. I think people who had lived through the 80s are more, uh, you know, uh, into the music of the 80s and the culture of the 80s are going to get a lot more of the stuff in the film. But is there, is there anything more to the film besides that? Well, I think it's, it's, it's more in the category, I mean, apart from the retro aspects to that, I mean, I think this is in the same genre as Judd Apatow films. For example, Buddy films where there are these guys who are in the 30s or 40s, mostly sort of like, you know, late, late 30s or upper 40s uh, or early 40s, and they are, it's about their friendships. It's, it's more about that aspect that comes out. So yes, it's about the 80s, but I think ultimately the lesson that you take out or the, the central theme of that is friendship. I agree, and in that way, I think it reminded me of another film we really liked. A film that at its heart is about friendship, it's about family, it's about community, and it's about 80s nostalgia. Anvil, the story of Anvil. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 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 and here, is, uh, here is a plug. If you haven't seen Anvil, the story of Anvil, that is the full name. Anvil, the story of Anvil. If you haven't seen it, rent it. Check it out. It's a phenomenal film. It's a documentary, but it's a phenomenal film. What a great double feature it would make. Yeah, you can do actually a really nice 80s retro night yeah. with these three films. Uh, and, yeah. and they can go with, uh, if you want to have an order to that, I would go with uh, The Wrestler. Absolutely. And then you go with Anvil, the, An the story of Anvil, and perhaps end the night with Hot Tub Time Machine. I like it. And you have to pause before you say hot tub time machine <laughs> and look directly into the camera the name of the film just shows so either i mean when, when we have talked about it like you know, that we were, we are going to see hot tub time machine a lot of people have given us uh, sort of like uh, physical eyebrows. eyes raised eyebrows but on the other hand i mean i liked ebert's point he said that just shows that the director is confident that yeah. you know what we are making a film and we're going to call it hot tub time machine and you're going to get what you think you're going to get. Absolutely. And another thing that I thought was, was, was smart and very kind of uh, efficient about the, 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 the storyline was they spend just about, you know, uh, hardly any time at all explaining the physics or the metaphysics of this hot tub time machine because you don't need it. It's a vehicle to get these characters back into their former um, kind of more youthful selves uh, surrounded by leg warmers and uh, big hair and, uh, and really bright colors. Is there anyone who 
probably shouldn't see this film or that you think would not really enjoy this film? I think anybody who's under 21 should not see this film. Namely because of the cultural historical references or do you think it's too uh, risque, too no, crude no. for them? No, I think historical references, uh, references <laughs> in, in, for the film. But uh, but rest of it, yeah. Okay. I mean it, what about former Nazi ski patrol people? I think that should be fine. I think they, I think they will find it enthralling to a certain degree because again, it goes back to the good old times uh, of the eighties. So, should we see it, or should people see it? Every, I, I think I think this film uh, is something that that everybody should or can see and would definitely enjoy it. Um, there there are some crude jokes and some uh, rather crass moments in the film, but. Um, Overall, uh, highly enjoyable. A lot of fun, smart, great soundtrack, and uh, always good to see John Cusack, uh, you know, back up on screen. Good times. All right. That's it. <laughs>